your passages from here and there is not going to work. Bring a clear passage like I have done now in John 17, 3, where Christ clearly points to who the only true God is. Are you able to do that? No, we ain't. Uh, Silence says a lot. Ready? Oh, yeah. It's not my time, mate. Be patient. <laughs> I've got to so wait for the wait. timer. You I've got to wait for the timer. You should have done timer, Bob. Right. Sorry, can we start? You only do timer because you can't handle the debate. Yeah. Okay, so notice, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Mansour has not dealt with the questions. Yeah. <laughs> Let's refresh. What are the questions? He's dealt with the one in Titus. He's dealt with the one in Titus by admitting that it does identify Jesus as God. Thank you very much. I did it. Case closed. Yeah. Mr. Now Presentation. Yeah. But, then Don't Mr. Present. says, but then he ignores the statement about the Good Shepherd, and then he tries to rephrase the passage to say, Ah, Good Shepherd. Jesus doesn't say, I am a Good Shepherd, one amongst many. He says, I am the Good Shepherd, because Israel, Israel, Israel. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. I didn't realize. Yeah, someone Thank you. My time. That's fine. Uh, do you want post, to post. It or, uh, no, no, you have it. That's good, fine. Because I'm going to go home and I'd like fine. to take my. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Bye, Paul. Good luck. He's wasting your time with this guy. He's extremely Bye, Paul. Bye, Paul. Bye, Bye, Paul. Bye, Paul. Right, ready. Maybe you guys should concentrate on the So, Bob. So, he didn't deal with the fact that Christ said, I am the Good Shepherd. Why is that important? One. Because contrary to the way that he rephrased it, Christ doesn't say, I am a good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. And two, Christ says, I am good. And Christ said, no one is good but God. And I asked him, who is good according to Jesus? God. And Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. He didn't deal with that. Read Ezekiel. Yahweh describes himself as a shepherd that is an archetype within the jewish paradigm of yahweh and jesus claims it for himself and then he said show me what jesus says in his own words yeah, yeah, so i waiting. we had to categorize we had to clarify what would count as jesus using his own words which meant that we had to see where yahweh describes himself and then see if Jesus uses that description of himself. And he does. And we showed it. And it wasn't an illusion. It wasn't a, a passing reference. It was a word for word identification. Yahweh says, I am the first and the last. Jesus says, I am the first and the last. And I asked Mansour, so who is the first and the last? The Yahweh of Isaiah or the Jesus of the New Testament and he didn't address the point all he's doing is shuffling all he's doing is trying to come out with erudite descriptions that these are not satisfactory rather than engaging with the evidence and I would like him to engage with the evidence I'll return to John 17 the father is the only true God in my next three minutes right notice the focus has become on the word the good shepherd so if the Psalms 82 judges were called Elohim would that make them God Elohim is already the why because it is a proper noun already Elohim so are you now suggesting the judges in Psalms 82 who God describes them as Elohim and he says these are my sons of the Most High he describes them as sons as well of the Most High so you admit according to your consistent logic Mr. Cartoon character that you have more than one gods now including 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 those judges human judges so congratulations on you now being a very much polytheistic in your understanding where Desperate. God is not a Trinitarian Desperate. God includes human judges now you talk about Christ saying he's a good good the good shepherd and he says I am good and you misquote the scripture did he not say don't call me good for there is no one who is good but God he says don't call me good excuse me correct me right now if I'm mistaken you are mistaken right so 
He's going to point in his own time from the scripture where Christ didn't say, don't call me good. Because I have read a long time ago, which says, right, why, yeah, yeah, why do you call me good? Why do you call me good? Right. So obviously he's even questioning. Right. Now, the, notice again, I am the first in the last issue. I gave you several verses from the Old Testament where God is saying, before me, there was no one. After me, there is no one. I alone am God and there is none else. So if God in the Old Testament, the God of who? Israel describes he's the only God and there's no one else. And he described himself as Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Can there be another Alpha and another Omega when he says there is none else? If you are consistent and logical, Maybe the cartoon characters are not logical no. and consistent. Yep. That is why the That's problem right. arises. If you were consistent and logical, you will understand that according to the Old Testament, understanding and depiction of God, the Father, God of Israel, He is Alpha and Omega, or the first and the last, and there is none else, meaning there cannot be another Alpha, another first, and another last or another Omega. Anyone who comes and claims this are simply not the God of Israel because the God of Israel alone is God as explained and depicted in the Hebrew Old Testament. I hope you understand what I'm saying rather than formulating your next response. <laughs> yep. Ready? So Mansour has again avoided the question. Standard phrase. Who was who <laughs> was the first and the last? Yahweh okay. or Jesus? Yeah, However, I won't avoid his points like he is avoiding mine. So I'm going to use this three minutes to address the three main strands of his argument. And if he wants to dodge my argument, then that is what he can do. But the cameras will show he is avoiding the points that I'm making. Let's just deal with the question about um, the question about the good teacher. He will. Yes. So, in Mark chapter 10, verse 17, a rich young ruler comes to Jesus and says, as he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, did Jesus say, as Mansour quoted him, as saying, don't call me good? No, he didn't say that. This is the actual response that Jesus gave. He said, why do you call me good? Why do you call me good? Not, don't call me good. So he's not saying to him, you're wrong for calling me good. He's saying, why do you call me good? Because only God is good. So if you recognize that I am good, because Jesus himself said, I am the good shepherd. Are you recognizing that I am God? That is the correct understanding of the passage, Mansour. And if you bothered to read anything more than a pamphlet from Zaki and Nike, you would have known that yourself. Now, he quoted the Psalms to defend against the letter of Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, I suggest that Mansour actually reads some scholarship and I suggest to him that he reads N.T. Wright because N.T. Wright talks about this. He talks about the literary form. The Psalms are poetry. They use poetic language. When God inspired the Psalmist writers, to address the judges as gods. This is in poetic form with poetic license. The letter that was written to Titus, by contrast, was not a poem. It was not using poetic imagery. It was making a black and white statement that Jesus was God. He's reading different literary forms as if they're all the same rather than treating poems as poems and instruction letters as instruction letters. I will get on to John 17, I promise. <laughs> the strategy you have been playing all along, Mansour is avoiding, when every time I'm responding, 
maybe there's a comprehension problem from your side. God willing, one day, may God increase you in your comprehension. I pray sincerely. Right? Amen. I have been I explaining, that. I have been explaining, but somehow there's some misunderstanding from maybe your part or whatever. Maybe I'm not explaining it well. Okay, I'll, let me take the blame. But I am explaining your points, which you cannot even connect the twos and two dots and eyes together. Now, John 17, 3, something that you'll come back, so we will focus on this because we want to know why you're avoiding this, maybe towards the end. Now, no, because it should be said from the very beginning. So, so far, I can say clearly, out of all that time that we had, have you provided any unambiguous, clear, sufficient verse where Christ is claiming, demonstrating he is the only true God of Israel? No, you haven't. It is quite evident. The all the things that you're bringing up are like requiring interpretation, good shepherd, this, that, and so on. Bringing anti bringing anti writer a poetic license. Are you suggesting seriously that? This is not true when the authors were inspired to write. But when they said, you are Elohim, son of the Most High, it doesn't mean they're Elohim, the son of the Most High. It's a lie in the form of a poetic imagery, poetic license. Is that what you're suggesting? It's a lie in the book of God when it's not true. Is that what you're suggesting? But no, very well we know, no, very well we know no, that whatever you want to say it is quite clear. Black and white, it says Elohim son of the most high and yet it doesn't make them god so my point stands people the authors of the new testament can say about christ or about any tom dick and harry that he is theos he is god it doesn't make them god remember how the quran refutes them people bring all these ascriptions and and att att attributions to people saying, oh he's god he's god quran refutes them all no they are not divine they are not god even though you are naming them god Quran even says people make their own desires as God. Is it really God? No, but it refutes the concept, but it is not God. So, so, so the question now is to you clearly, have you, of course you haven't provided anything. Are you going to provide any statement from Christ where he is identifying himself, not as God, goddess, God son, God brother, anything, good shepherd, first, last, unambiguous, clear, black and white, the word we agreed on, black and white statement, where he's saying, I am the only true God of Israel. When are you going to do this, Mr. Cartoon character? I will call you Cartoon character unless you give me your name. Bob, that's not your name. So, so guys, it's like, it's getting to the point of ridiculousness. I agree. The case your part. is mounting up against Mansour's position. And rather than simply address that, what he does is he narrows the category of permissible evidence to such narrow constraints that if I was to use a similar standard and apply it to basic Islamic beliefs, Islam would fail. Because I'm not going to do it now, and nor am I going to ask Mansour to address it. But I want to give an example of how I could do the same. I would say to him, show me in the Quran where it says in black and white, use literature called Hadith to interpret the Quran. Such a statement he could not verify. He couldn't do it. So he's using a rhetorical illusion. He is trying to say you have to match this formula of words because you can't use other words to say the same. It has to be in these words. However, to any erudite, intelligent and sincere person who is engaging with the evidence, you wouldn't look for a formulae. You would take the evidence that is there and if the evidence said the same, even if it did it in other words, that would be acceptable to you. But Mansour is not sincere. He is not sincerely engaging with the text. Now, I want to use my remaining time to address John 17. So, Jesus does call God the Father the only true God. Yes, that's it. We've never denied it. We've never denied it because our understanding of God is taken from the entire New Testament. Congratulations. And so, 
It calls Jesus God, it calls the Father God, and it calls the Holy Spirit God, and it says there's one God. Listen to what Jesus goes on to say in the same passage that Mansour quotes. Listen, Mansour. Listen, Mansour. Listen. Listen. So, after he says, you the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent, I glorified you on earth having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Case closed again. Christ is saying, before the world was, he exists with the Father and has the glory of the Father. Must, no, I'm running out of time, so I'll have to pick up this point in okay. my next three minutes. Right. Now, notice again, thank you, notice again the problem Mr. Cartoon character is facing in this debate. Failing time after time to provide a reference from Christ that Christ is the only true God, we've come to the culmination, the conclusion, which he agreed right in the last segment, that according to the admission of Christ, the only true God is identified. Who did Christ identify as the only true God? It is the Father, not Christ. So, the case is indeed closed, my friend. So, I think there's no point no. going any further since you your since yeah. since you since you hang on since yeah. you're admitting with around. very sincerity that the only true God, God is, the father. is the Father, not anyone else, <laughs> in, according to Christ Himself. There is nothing further to add. The only thing, only thing that I want to address is this few bits and pieces that you keep bringing. I am not asking you to provide some kind of divine attributes of Christ. Oh, Christ pre-existed. So he must be the only true God of Israel. Imagine now this. Let's look at it logically. If Christ pre-existed in your argument, does that make him the only true God of Israel? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Because the only true God of Israel is, according to Christ's admission, who? Is the Father. Not only that, according to the Father himself, God in the Old Testament, the only true God is the one who has no one else with him. I alone am God and there is none else. If you bring someone else along with him, that cannot be the only true God of Israel. I don't think you understand logic or even mathematics here. So, <laughs> oh, I do. look, look, so oh, I do. what I would suggest is, you know, after this, reflect, reflect. Sorry. Don't take it personally, reflect. If Christ and his God. Remember, Christ himself says he has a God. I am going to my God and your God, right? He has a God. If Christ himself says his God is the only true God, why and who are you and me to say Christ is the only true God of Israel? I don't think this is even debatable. If the one person who we are debating about Christ himself says the only true God is the Father who is the God of the Jewish people and everyone else, not Moses, not him, not anyone else. Why is there a debate? I don't no. get it. I don't get it. Is it because you've already have this belief formed and now you have to justify your wrong belief? Perhaps, but why? Indeed, indeed, I would invite you to reflect on the fact that Mansour has dealt with none of the evidence. The Mansour has ignored a clear statement by Jesus where he identifies himself as Yahweh on multiple occasions. I invite you to reflect on that fact because Mansour only has a rhetoric. He doesn't have an argument and his argument is based upon the manipulation of the text. So, sorry, sorry. I know it's laughable, but we should stop laughing. He said, he said that if someone has the attribute of God, does that make them the God of Israel? That was what he said. And do you remember when he quoted from Isaiah saying that I am God alone and there is none else? 
So who else could have the divine attributes but God? Exactly. So if Jesus has the divine attributes of God, who can he be? According to the Old Testament. The Father! That the Father. is why. Yeah. That is why, Mansour. Is that what you're suggesting? wrong? That is why, Mansour, you're wrong. Yeah. Now, let's go a bit further. Because Muslims often demand of us, where does Jesus say, I am God, worship me? Well, we've established where Jesus says, I am God. So now let me show you where he says, worship me. In his dreams, in his dreams. Let, let me show you. Notice how the Muslims heckle. So, in John chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. Notice, Trinitarian language. Father, Son. Notice the divine attribute. The Father is not going to judge you. The Son is going to judge you. So that all will honor the Son even as they honor the Father. Mansour has already demonstrated that the Father is the true God of Israel. John 17. Jesus is saying, honor me as you honor the Father. So if the Father is God, how should you honor Jesus as God? It's logical. And just to drive that point home, in the Greek, the word honor, in the Greek, when I can get my phone to work, sorry, one second. In, in the Greek, the word that is used there is timiao. Timiao means to affix a value to something. What value do you give to God? It's infinite value, is it not? Worthy of your life resources? Well, Jesus is saying, honor me the Son as you honor the Father. Worship me, in other words. Case closed. Con conclusion from me and then... It just did. Conclusion from me. Do you want all to conclusion? So I can say and you can have your conclusion. We will do conclusion. Okay, here is my conclusion part, right? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. Um, those of you who are watching this discussion debate and those who are watching or will be watching later on, please ponder and reflect on the subject that we're discussing. The subject we wanted to discuss is who, who indeed among the concept of God that is worthy of worship, the Islamic concept of God or the Christian concept of God, which Bob, the cartoon character, which he called himself, didn't want to engage with for his own reasons. We want to engage with the discussion. So if you're afraid of some kind of, of some concern, because you only think that if we really discuss this, then the truth will come out, then let us be the lovers of truth. Because truth is something that we should uphold. If truth is indeed in the worship of one God, not a tri Trinitarian or Son of God, let it be, my friend, let it be. So, what I would like people to reflect more on this issue is this. The New Testament has been scribed by various people. Some, according to scholarship, we know the scribes of authors, some we don't. You are relying on a scripture, which you call scripture, on people that you don't know who wrote it. Some you do, some you don't. And you think this is going to be giving you salvation in the hereafter on unknown authors. Who knows what they're talking to you about God, what attribution they have done to God. But in Islam, it's otherwise. We have the speech of God, all of it, not the speech of Muhammad in the Quran, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and what clear black and white Allah says in the Quran la ilaha illahu there is no God besides him so worship him if that was indeed the mission of Christ our messenger which you have insulted us in our understanding by elevating him in in a deity of some kind he should have said the same thing worship me he should have said that in some way or other. He should have he should have he should have made it black and white that I am God of Israel. I am indeed the God of Israel. Instead, he's saying, Worship the one in heaven. Hallow be thy name, thy will be done. Thy kingdom can worship the Father, worship the Father. Throughout, I am going to my father, your your, your father, my God and your God. Throughout, Honor the only true God, only 
true God is the Father. Yeah, and he gives the glory that he has, that God gave him to his disciples. That doesn't make his disciples God, does it? Be consistent. The glory that he receives from God, he gives it to disciples. And yet, it doesn't make them God. So why would the honor make him God as well? So please, open up the Quran, people. And you will see what the true Tell him again. belief is. So, my final comments when the time is ready. You see, there came a point in my life when I considered being a Muslim. And I read the translations of the Quran. And I found in them inconsistencies, contradictions, factual errors. In a book Logical fallacy. that was Don't being worry. claimed by Muslims to be perfect. So by the Islamic own acid test, I rejected the Quran, or at least its translation. Now, in terms of the hadiths, I found problems there as well, because Muslims were telling me that these hadiths were reliable, but then as I met more Muslims, I realized that the Muslims themselves could not agree about which hadiths were reliable. And we see that in the park today. Whenever a hadith embarrasses the Dawah team, it's not reliable, even if it's Sahih. But if it's something that makes Islam look good, then it's reliable. So I can't take lectures about authorship from Mansour. No, Mansour ignored the evidence. We always knew he was going to do that. That's why he comes here every week and has done so for 20 years. However, for those of you that are sincere in heart. For those of you that are genuinely searching for the truth, I invite you to consider carefully what you heard. Jesus takes the titles of Yahweh and in identical words applies them to himself. Jesus ascribes divine attributes to himself. Jesus calls himself in Jewish paradigms, divine categories that are only given to Yahweh. Jesus himself says that you are to honor him as you honor God. As you honor God. How can you do that unless he is God? That is what Jesus did. And Mansour ignored it all. He might want to ignore the evidence because that evidence contradicts his belief. But that truth, ladies and gentlemen, is the very truth upon which our salvation depends. If we do not accept Christ for who he is, then we are rejecting God. We are rejecting the one who will judge us. We are rejecting the one who can save us. And that is why this debate is about salvation. And it is why you have to consider who Christ claimed to be, because he either is God or he was a madman. One thing that he wasn't was merely a prophet. Take care, Mansour. Right. So congratulations of making Jesus the Father. This is a Christian not heresy. Not no, it's a Christian I heresy. Not what I did. That's what you implied. If your argument is all characterization, you're going to get no. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Bro, Remember, no, the debate is, no, no, debate is over. I'm a Trinitarian. But I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just correcting the, the conclusion that you've derived no. from the evidence, which no, was, no, 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 like, you're not, you're remember he said, no, no, you remember what he said? Jesus is Alpha wants, and Omega. He feels beat, no, so he wants to no. keep it going. He I, feels beat, so he no. wants to keep it going. I am congratulating you right. for being a Christian heretic no, not by calling Jesus, admitting Jesus I'll as the Father. Point and then I'll yeah, yeah. So you said, okay. who else would Jesus be? Because if the Father says he's Alpha and Omega, Jesus says Alpha and Omega, so who would Jesus be? Then. Jesus would be the Father. Father. That is the logical conclusion that you made. You so made. congratulations, or maybe a correction you can correct later. <laughs> This I'll correct you now. Go on, correct me then. Basically, the correction is this. Yeah. His premise of the argument is that all the theophanies seen in the Old Testament were the Father. He's wrong. The theophanies in the Old Testament were the Son. That's the correction. In the New Testament, it clearly makes distinctions between the Father and the Son. We've read them today. You heard them. Jesus is saying to the Father and calling himself the Son. But the New Testament is clear. 
The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. They're all called God in a paradigm in which only one God exists. So there you have one God and three persons. Case closed. Suddenly the gods become persons. <laughs> but anyway, Bob, is that what your real name is? You can call me Bob. No, no, no. What's your real name? No, you're not having my real name. Okay, you're not having my real name. Doesn't matter. Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't Thank matter. You. Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't anyway, matter. Anyway, it was nice but debating why, with you. Why, why choose a cartoon character? I didn't. If you remember, when we first debated, <laughs> you yeah. said irrelevant. I called myself irrelevant. Yeah. And then you called me Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah. And then we ended up having a silly argument about that. And then someone shouted out from the crowd, "His name's Bob. Call him Bob." And I just went with it. That's it. No, have a nice name. Everyone else took yeah. the builder onto it. I just went with Bob. And then everyone else went Bob the builder. And I just ran with it. That's all. Sure. Anyway, Mansour, that was anyway, a very pleasant debate. Anyway, reflect on it, what we've said. Please and do. The, and the proposal that... Please do. No, proposal of the debate Please do. that... What was the topic that we were discussing? Yes. Not about yes. his deity, but about the actual topic. Yes, yes. Take anyway, care. look after yourself. Take you care. You too. Bob, we do not convert. Assalamu my name is Vegar and I'm a Norwegian Muslim convert. I cannot express how grateful I am for Allah to have guided me to Islam. In my country, there are no Islamic schools or dawah centers that fully operate in my language. A lot of the Islamic programs here are in Urdu, Arabic and Somali. And I don't understand these languages. We new Muslims need a place where we really can learn Islam. Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me to the Dawah organization Islam Net, who helped me stay firm in my religion. We are now raising funds to establish a Norwegian Masjid and Dawah Center that will educate our people about Islam in the Norwegian language. The Prophet wasallam said, whoever builds a Masjid for Allah, Allah will build for him a similar house in Jannah. If you take part in this project, you will inshallah be rewarded for all the new Muslims who learn about Islam and all of the Muslims who learn to give da'wah and every single person who accepts Islam through this center. This will inshallah be an endless ongoing charity for you. And let's not forget, Allah will inshallah build for you a palace in Jannah. As a Norwegian Muslim, Norway is my country and dawah to these people is my responsibility and you are my family please donate for the sake of Allah and build for yourself a house in Jannah and whatever you give Allah will give you more in return and please click on the share button so you can get the reward of everyone who follows you in donating for this masjid may Allah reward you